Welcome to Calming the Chaos Podcast, where we help you find peace in a chaotic world. I'm Tracy Canella, licensed mental health counselor, certified eating disorder specialist, and advanced clinical hypnotherapist. Calming the Chaos Podcast provides you with self-help resources for handling anxiety, stress, and overwhelm. It is not a substitute for counseling or psychotherapy. So if you like what you hear, please subscribe and share it with your friends. Thanks for tuning in. And now, let the chaos begin. Well, hello, this is Calming the Chaos live on YouTube, and I'm Tracy Canella coming at you live and wondering if I'm going to be able to figure out all the chaos of going live. I don't do it often enough, so if I make a mistake, please forgive me. Today, I am here to talk about the difference between counseling and coaching, and the reason I'm doing that is because I've been getting quite a few phone calls for counseling. And I'll always tell people I'm not taking new counseling clients, but I could be open to coaching. So I do both, but there's only certain hours of the day that I can do counseling and there's only certain hours of the day I can do coaching. But people always ask this follow-up question. What is the difference between counseling and coaching? And could I benefit from coaching versus counseling? And so I thought a fun way, I've been thinking about this for a while. And the reason I'm going live is because I really don't want to do any more video editing. So I'm just going to try and make this work. And hopefully it does. And people will be able to watch back and be able to figure out whether they want a counselor or a coach. Both are very valuable, but both have a lot of differences. And I thought I would take one of my favorite YouTube stars, I think he's a star actually, a rock star, uh, Dr. John Deloney, and uh, use him as an example for a coach. He actually does a call-in radio show and it's called the Dr. John Deloney Show. It's on YouTube. I'll put the link into the notes. Actually, it's probably already there. And what he does is he just faces real life problems and issues. And I thought we would just take one that had to do with body image since I am a, an eating disorder specialist. And there are a lot of people who come to me who have concerns about eating food and their own body, their body image, the way they think about themselves. And we can look at the difference between counselor and coach. I guess if I wanted to say some of the differences between counseling and coaching, it's going to be that a coach is going to be more directive and kind of spoon feed you advice, whereas a counselor is going to reflect back, help the client to be in their emotions, identify their emotions. We might both do, a counselor and a coach might both do psychoeducation, but counselors let the client figure out their own solutions and coaches typically will give them advice. And sometimes coaches will make assumptions or conclusions about what's going on with the caller in this case or the client, whereas uh, counselors will ask more questions and let the client conclude what's going on with them. And then also you'll see in this video when we start to watch it that uh, Dr. John, and I just love Dr. John. He's like one of my favorite YouTube guys. Uh, he will offer judgments and opinions. And while we are human, counselors do have those judgments and opinions. Counselors need to keep those to themselves for the most part and let the client offer their own perspectives. We might ask, well, do you think this is blank? and see what the client thinks about that. But we generally won't say like, oh my God, that's messed up. But sometimes we will, because sometimes it is messed up. Uh, some of these issues that people bring into therapy sessions are messed up and there are very messy emotions involved as well. So, so we have to deal with a lot of emotions. So in this clip that I'm gonna be showing you, it's about 17 minutes long. I'm going to be interrupting every so often, uh, hopefully not so often that it will get annoying for the persons who are going to be listening back to it but I have to do that because of fair use. And so just a little note about fair use here. I'm gonna go ahead and put my little fair use uh, little thing here on the screen. 
And yes, the federal law does allow for us to use other people's content if it is for the purposes of education, which this is, or any other sort of reason that I'm adding to the content. I'm not stealing the content and just playing it, right? So there's my fair use warning. And uh, I actually did, in addition to putting this fair use thing together, contact the Dr. John Deloney show and ask them for permission to use the content. And they have emailed me back on a couple of occasions saying that they're inundated with emails. So I think that is their tacit response that I am okay to use it. And of course, I'm not going to be dissing Dr. John. He's like one of my favorites. And so if anybody shows up in the chat, has any questions, great. If not, this is kind of a recording session, keeps me on my toes because of the fact that I am live and I will be li less likely to mess up. Uh, so thank you for indulging me in this. And so what we wanna do now is share the screen and I wanna just give you an overview of Dr. John Deloney and who he is. I'm gonna share his website here. Here's Dr. John with his smiling face. And I love his little tagline, you are worth being well. Isn't that amazing? So there's Dr. John. And I think, let's see, let's go down here a little bit. He talks about his qualifications. There you go. He has his BA in humanities and he went to a Christian university. He's got a master of education uh, and that's from Texas Tech. And then he earned two doctorates from Texas Tech, one in counselor education and one in supervision. Oh, and supervision, that's one, that's one doctorate. And then the other doctorates in higher education administration. So he's really into educating and counseling. He's really super qualified, certified, and just a cool guy. He lives in Tennessee with his wife and his kids. And he has a radio show, as I have said. If you want to go to his website, uh, I will go ahead and put it on the screen for you. It is www.johndeloney.com. Of course, what else would it be, right? All right, and it's also in, in the notes for this. All right, let's see if I can pull this off, all right? And if anybody does show up in chat and I am not responsive, it's probably because I am a maneuvering technical chaos. And uh, it's okay, because I'll get through it, and we'll all be great. And I just hope that the audio will work. It looks like I've got it on there. So here is the clip that I'm going to share with you today. And let's see if this works here. Nikki, what's going on? Hi, Dr. John. Thank you so much for taking my call. You bet. Thanks for calling. How are you? I'm good. How are you? We are having a blast figuring it out. One caller at a time, I guess. So <laughs> I, I'm still figuring out what I'm even doing with my life, Nikki. So we'll get right. there, right? So, hey, how can I help right. you? What's going on? So my boyfriend and I have been together for six years, and we have two babies together. Okay. We have a we have a seven month old and a two year old. So. Oh, so you're in it now, huh? <laughs> Yeah, I'm in it. Do you, even, hey, so do you, even, do you a, even know what day it is? I, I I actually don't. I know it's somewhere in April. <laughs> oh, I love that. Okay. Um, all right. So that's one of the things I really love about Dr. John is that he's got such genuine emotional reactions. And we as counselors do as well. Sometimes we have to kind of, kind of hold it in. But, you know, I like to have fun with my clients as much as I can. I like to say it's like visiting a dentist. So you want to be able to get the work done, but you want to get it done as painlessly as possible. And I can see Dr. John does a really great job with that. By the way, this call is from Seattle, Washington. And as you know, I'm in Olympia, Washington. And uh, Dr. John is talking uh, to Nikki. And uh, we're going to go ahead and continue uh, to listen in. You have a two-year-old and a seven-month-old. You don't know what day it is. And I can only guess where yeah. this is going. You've been dating this guy for six years. Yeah. And then what? Yeah. Well, so he kind of, so we live together. You know, we, we play house, as Dave calls it. Okay. And he has a hard time with me. I, well, I guess I should say I have a hard time keeping up with his kind of expectations. 
Um, so he wants me to exercise more and to get my body back to the way it was. Um, but I feel. So I got to pause there because that's a genuine response. Like what? Wait, what? He wants me to exercise more and get my body in shape. And uh, you could see how he was writing on his paper and all of a sudden he snaps to attention. And so, yeah, that kind of thing happens. It's, uh, it's kind of like we can be flowing right along and somebody can say, whoa, something that really shocks us. Uh, so let's just see what he has to say about that. I feel so overwhelmed. <laughs> but hey, just, uh, just a quick it. thing. Does he know that you have a seven month old? Oh, and by the way, I'm sorry. I understand that the words and the sound do not match the mouth, but what I'm dealing with here is a screen recording that I made. So it's going to be a little off. Uh, all right. And a two year old? I think he picked that up by now. I think, I think he might pick that up by now. But... Okay. So <laughs> I, I, I'm, try <laughs> I'm trying to wrap my head around this. Walk me through how that actual conversation takes place. So he sees you breastfeeding a kid, and there's a two-year-old just screaming, and you have dinner cooking, and he looks at you and goes, yeah, this body is not cutting it. You're going to have to fix it. Like, what, how, how does that even happen? <laughs> he'll get home from work, and he'll be like, so did you do your exercise bike today? And oh, I look gosh, at him and what? Say, <laughs> and of course, I have to stop it here, too, because this is a genuine reaction that counselors will have and coaches will have. And it's kind of like, oh, my gosh, there's a siren in my neighborhood. What is going on? We never have sirens out here. Yikes. Hopefully everything's OK. Anyway, so we have genuine reactions. Some of us inside our head are doing this, especially counselors are. But Dr. John, you know, he gets to just do it right out there in the open and let it all out. So let's continue to watch. Say no, I did not do my exercise back today. <laughs> now, Dr. John, I'm dealing with a guy who has the mindset of Jocko. I know, but listen, I do too. I love Jocko. I'm going to do a speak. Who the heck is Jocko anyway? Hmm. Engagement with him in a few weeks. I love him. And you know what I did, never, ever did? Looked at my wife with it holding a seven-month-old and be like, so how'd your workout go today, babe? You know, never. You know why? Because I have a soul. And I actually care about human beings, right? That, like, I don't care. Jocko wouldn't do that to his own wife. And he's got multiple. He's got four or five kids, right? God almighty. So... All right. Well, so they are making light of this, but it is really actually pretty hurtful for somebody who you're close to or in a partnership with to comment on your body that way and or make uh, in, insinuations or ask questions about whether you've been working out or whether you've been eating right or whether you've been doing X, Y, or Z. Uh, and so he is genuinely reacting with that wonderful face of his. Again, some of the reasons I really like Dr. Deloney is he's a straight shooter. Uh, you know, we have, he and I have very many of the same reactions, me inside my head, him right out there. And, um, you know, he's, he's opinionated, as you'll see as we go along. And I can't even express half of what I think to my clients, but um, that's not my job. My job is to help them to move through their emotions. So that's a difference between counseling and coaching as well. And he's very intuitive. And as you can see, he's humorous. And he can be deep, as you'll see. This is, a, this is the greatest video, I think, to use as an example, because he can be very deep. And, um, you know, let's not, uh, let's not pretend. He's easy on the eyes, and he's got a great voice. So let's continue. So I, I always want to try to find the soul in somebody, what they're trying to, trying to be helpful, is... Uh, and my body's not even that bad. I've lost 70 pounds. No, listen, <laughs> Nikki, this has nothing to do with your body. That's why I'm trying to get to a place where I can empathize with this guy before I just hang up and on you and I call him directly. So <laughs> that's, that's not even our main problem, though. Oh, that's sweet. Not. Well, continue, Nikki. Go ahead. Um, so he, uh, he thinks I don't keep the house clean enough. Oh, gosh. Nikki, listen. And to where, to where the point he wants to kick me out. <laughs> hey, listen, go. Bye. All right. Wow. She just dropped a bomb on him. Uh, that's not even our main problem. He just wants me to keep the, the house cleaner to the point where he's going to kick her out. 
And then Deloney just out with it, then go. <laughs> and we might as people, and especially as counselors, we might be thinking that, you know, like, wow, why are you staying in this relationship sort of thing? Uh, but that is that is really the reality of what we are dealing with here is that people have these, these deep feelings. And um, you'll see as we continue, uh, this collar has a lot of emotions below the surface. Bye. Take both of those kids and go. I know. I can't do that, though. Hey, listen. Go. Yeah, so you could hear her voice start to break up and a counselor at this point in time wouldn't continue to say go. Uh, what we would do is we would um, try and help that person lean into the emotion and help that person to soothe the emotion, maybe provide a skill or two. I think at this point in time, I would be quiet and, and I'd say, wow, sounds like you're going through a lot. Now, I know that sounds really counselory, but some people don't like the directiveness of coaching, but it can really provide a lot of uh, help when you're in crisis like this. So I have to say that both counseling and coaching could help this caller slash client to be able to move towards something that's more meaningful. And she's obviously, uh, that really hit an emotional chord when he said go. And then she's thinking about the possibilities of what it would look like if she did go. And that's what made her break into tears or her voice is cracking. This guy's not worthy of another second of your love and your time and your affection. Dad, I try, I, I try, but it's just so much in a, a day. He says I spend too much time on social media. And I, I get that, but I just, I don't have the motivation right now to do any of anything. <laughs> Yeah, so I can tell you what I would do at this point in time is that I would absolutely validate her emotion and try and help her to name her emotion. What is it that you're feeling? And since she's crying, I would say probably sadness, but maybe some frustration or whatever, and would help her to identify what she's feeling, what she's thinking, and, and validating emotions, meaning that I would say it makes sense that you feel this way. This is a, a lot to deal with when you have two young kids and uh, somebody pressuring you and all these other pressures and uh, apparently some escape behaviors into social media would be completely understandable. So I would be all into validating as a counselor. Let's see what Dr. John does. Yeah. Nope. Have you left before? Yeah, I, I, I just came back like a week ago or yeah, about a week ago, oh, I left so with you, my dad. So you moved out? Okay, so how was that time away? It was very good. Um, it's it's hard, you know, living somewhere else. Yeah. Why'd you with come back? Two little monsters. Um, well, I just, I want, I missed him, and I want my kids to be around their dad. Um, I, I don't want my kids I, around I a guy really like that. Another opinion and judgment. Again, um, what he's trying to do is effective because what he's trying to do is help her to see that uh, the person and the behaviors of the person that she's with is aren't honoring her and that she needs to maybe explore being with somebody who does honor her. Um, so what I would have to say is uh, this is a great opportunity to present some psychoeducation on codependency. So codependency meaning that I'm not independent. I'm actually dependent on another person for some sort of emotional support. And uh, to an extent, I think we all are. But what happens is, is we become too dependent on somebody and they're our sole source of emotional support, then we can feel like we we don't we can't do life without them. And so our own lives kind of go by the wayside. A good source of codependency explanation can be found in the victim triangle, where there's a victim, a persecutor, and a rescuer. And I'll ask clients to see you know, where they fit in in that cycle, where they change from possibly a victim to persecutor or a rescue to, rescuer to victim or whatever it is. And um, so there's a, a really good opportunity to do psychoeducation there. Uh, but yeah, I, th I think being opinionated is great and it helps a person to think in terms of how my life could be different without this person. But, um, uh, you know, so it's your choice about whether you want to do counseling or coaching. Hopefully this is providing you with enough 
contrast and comparison uh, to where you'd be able to decide. I don't want I my don't. kids around a guy like that. I don't I want my like when I'm I don't want my friend Nikki around a guy like that. Now here's the thing. He may understand that exercise, especially for folks with postpartum, is really good for you. He may mm -hmm. understand that scrolling social media is not good for you. Right? Mm -hmm. And he's right on both of those things. Mm -hmm. Again, there's his opinion. Uh, he could have asked her at that point, well, what do you think about social media? What do you think about exercise? And how do you want to live your life? And, and that would be, as I said before, letting the caller or the client uh, decide and figure it out themselves versus him saying pushing his opinion on her. Although he's very intuitive and pretty much spot on. Uh, his callers love him and agree with him. And so uh, he's got some sort of gift and I think that coaches can do that and can be very effective in helping people in that way. But he also needs to yeah. know that beating up on a struggling mom of two tiny little babies, clear there's other things going on in your relationship, clearly. Mm -hmm. And if he is somebody who has chosen not to commit to you after six years and two kids together, and now he's putting ultimatums on you because he wants his old life back and it's your job to get that old life back for him then he's not somebody that's going to be there long term for you okay well he doesn't know that because he hasn't talked to the guy the partner of this person but i get what he's after is that the um that the track record here isn't looking so great for this guy but in my opinion anybody can change and so even if he is of that mindset right now, there, there are things that he could do uh, that could be helpful in the future and he could change. Uh, so he also might be using a tactic to put her on one side of the fence, like go, 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 because then it will force her to think about, well, what are the alternatives to going? Uh, I'm not really sure where he goes with this because I've only listened to maybe the um, the episode one time and I'm not remembering, but let's go ahead and continue and see what Dr. John does with Nikki. Okay. Do you hear, yeah. what, I'm, you hear what I'm saying? Yeah, and you I know, am. I'm right, aren't I? You are right. And I know my mind is like, you know, if he's not willing to marry me you know and not be like well maybe if you because he says this is like this is the job interview and if i want the ring what? Then wait, I need wait, 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 wait. <laughs> the job interview oh my gosh what would you do you already had two kids with this guy and you've been together six years i think she said and this is the job interview like i think i already got the job didn't i get the job oh my gosh did i get the job okay all right, I'm getting a little bit, see, this is the way it goes, right? Six years and two kids and you're interviewing? Yeah, I know. <laughs> Nikki, uh-uh. You know who wouldn't put up with that crap? Jocko. <laughs> Whoever Jocko is. And I won't either. You're worth more than that. Are you struggling right now? Yes. Is exercise it's just always? I tell, him, I tell him it's just a season. We're in the thick of this. We're in the thick of this right now, and he just—it's like it's in one ear and out the other. Doesn't care. It Just—it's like the only thing he sees is the house, and the house is a little messy. We've got dishes and we've got dirty laundry, and there's toys everywhere, and that's all he sees. I swear, that's all he sees. I'll tell you, this problem comes into my office more often than you'd think. Just the 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 tasks of keeping a house together when you have kids or when you have a partner who's disabled or in any kind of context, it really gets to be a problem and obviously causing her uh, a lot of intense emotions because she's tired, she's got two kids and she can't keep up with it and she's got this expectation put on her. And uh, so I would try and relay that to her as well, just to be able to uh, tell her that it's a common problem and that a lot of people are struggling with that. And in our post pandemic world, what we need to do is we need to lift each other up and support each other. And, um, and that is the most important thing right now. And so one of Jocko's core tenants is when you see a challenge, fix it. Yeah. And what every husband who's got a wife with 
a two-year-old and a seven-month-old in the house should do is step up and help with the dishes for crying out loud and the vacuuming and the laundry. And I don't care how many jobs you're working. I don't care how busy you are. I don't care how tired you are. As you mentioned, you're in a season. When it's winter, everybody puts on a jacket. Everybody has to de-ice the driveway. Everybody has to do different things in winter because it's winter. And when you have a two-year-old and a seven-month-old, everything feels a little bit heavy. Is that right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. And now listen, I will tell you in a more gentle way, you will never go wrong putting those kids in a double stroller and going for a long walk, ever. Well, I'm not sure what he's getting at here. Is he telling her to exercise and also spend time with the kids? I'm not sure about that, but what we could definitely do is put options on the table and uh, you know, offer up solutions. Do you want to move your body around more? And um, he he's saying in a gentle way that you can never go wrong with putting both those kids in the stroller and going for a walk. I'm not really sure what he's implying, but um, it, that sort of remark could shame a person as well because maybe they're not doing that. I'm not sure. So it's kind of risky, but let's see where he goes with it. You will never go wrong by being on your phone less, right? Yeah. And you know that. Right. Oh, yeah. You will never go wrong by by um, making a list of the things that you need to do in a day and really leaning into them to use Jocko language to crush those things on that list, however big or small they are. And sometimes they're as small for a mom with a seven month old and a two year old. Sometimes it's as small as I'm going to make the bed. I'm going to take a shower and yeah. I'm going to fill in the blank. I'm going to do one thing around here. Right. So that's a great example of how you do coaching as well and just give them uh, some suggestions or actually he's pretty directive about that list and being able to make make a list and uh, getting those things done one one by one. So uh, counselors will do that too, but what we'll do is we'll come up with a list with the client and ask them, well, what do you think you could be doing differently? What would you like to be doing with your life? Let's make a list about that and see if you can uh, put an intention out there to be able to accomplish those things on your list. And you're going to sit down with him and y'all are going to plan that out. And I would recommend doing it to the day. But if he's... However, sorry, I keep interrupting myself. I keep, sorry, Dr. John, I keep interrupting you. But the thing is, is to be able to make that list with your partner, you're gonna need to learn some communication skills. And this is where I'm, I'm sure a counselor and a coach could do some really good work is to be able to just put up, uh, put out there some uh, communication skills that she might be able to use. Dialectical behavioral therapy really does a nice job of interpersonal effectiveness skills. There's just the I statements, you know, really easy skill that she could use. Like, um, I feel this way when you say this. Uh, I would like us to make a list together of some of the things that I you would like me to do. And let's come to an agreement on that. And that would be something a counselor would do. He said the words to you, this is a job interview. I want, <laughs> I want you to walk out of the job interview because you don't want to work there. You know what I mean? You don't want to work there. And that is scary and that is terrifying and that is frustrating. That guy does not deserve you. Yeah, well, you know, let her identify her own emotions. But, you know, we, we could ask, is that scary? And we could ask if that's frustrating. Um, but let her identify her own emotions is how a counselor would approach it. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You don't deserve to be interviewing after six years in kids. I know. I, 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 I completely agree. <laughs> okay. So what's stopping you? What, what's stopping you? I, I don't want a broken family. <laughs> it is broken. Ooh, Dr. John, really? Okay, well, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Hmm, uh, what would a counselor say? I don't want a broken family. Yeah, I would say that that's really understandable. I don't know that anybody really wants a broken family. Uh, so let's put some options on the table and see how you might be able to uh, heal it if possible. And then of course there comes some skills that we could teach uh, and options on the table. 
and encouragement given, support systems, resources. We could do all that kind of stuff. And um, yeah, let's see what Dr. John does. <laughs> it is. You running around with duct tape doesn't make your tile floor not crack. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> And what's happening is these, these two little kids are are figuring out. Wow, this is how this is how parents act. This is how two people who play house and love each other act. This is how they treat each other. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I, I get it. I I, I get it. I this get is it. how a yeah. grown man treats the wife of his two little babies. You yeah. know. Yeah. And that's, that's what I'm afraid of. Don't be afraid of it. Because when you say I'm afraid of it, that's like saying a bear might come. All right. Well, yeah. And this is, this is the, the, the thing is um, all emotions are valid. So if she says she's afraid of that, then um, we need to be able to say, yeah, that makes sense. It makes sense that you're afraid of it. Not don't be afraid of that. That's kind of invalidating actually. And I'm sure that if he went back and listened to this, he might think, oh yeah, maybe I could have done that differently um, because no emotions are wrong. And we don't ever want to say to somebody, don't feel an emotion in, in my opinion. This has come. It is at your door. It is in your home. Okay. Oh, gosh. I know. I know. So when, when he, then, when you were off at your dad's house, was he calling you saying, hey, come home, come home, I'm sorry? He, well, let's, let's, let's make note that there was not any, I'm sorry, thrown into this at all. Okay. Um, he said he wanted to, but he didn't want to seem desperate. And I'm like, what? We're not date, or like we're not like at the beginning of our relationship. You don't have to play it cool. I, I can't date a robot anymore. I need to know like feelings. I need to hear these, these feelings. You know, I don't want to be desperate. Much. I know. I don't want to seem desperate. And I was like, what do you mean desperate? Like, If your wife you and your two babies leave your house, <laughs> that is the definition of desperate. I agree. I mean, really. <laughs> gotta say that I agree with that part. It was so funny. I got it. Oh, God. It was so funny. He called me because he was like, hey, the lights are out. How do you pay the electric bill? <laughs> your lights got cut off? <laughs> No, he, we did, I didn't pay it in time, and so he's like, hey, could you pay this for me? I mean, using his card and stuff, and he <sighs> pays for it, but he didn't know how to. So I'm like, I think that's a little desperate, honey. <laughs> okay, so here's the deal, Nikki. Here's what I want you to do, in all seriousness. And here's where the coaching comes in. Here's where he starts to tell her what she needs to do, and some people really want and need that. And I know that you are laughing to keep this overwhelming tide of grief to come over you. Is that fair? He's not wrong. Yeah, definitely. Okay. So I want you to today call a local counselor in your area and set up an appointment for just you. Okay. Okay. The problem with that is that a lot of counselors like me included, even the ones that are doing telehealth, they're just not taking any clients. We are swamped out here. And so I do, this is one of the other reasons why I wanted to make this video is because coaches can help you too in different ways. They can uh, lead you into some community resources or any other resources and they can teach you communication skills just as well as counselors can. The main difference is, is that if you're wanting to use insurance, uh, coaching isn't typically covered under insurance, uh, counseling is. And um, so then you have to pay cash out of your pocket and some people can't afford that. So, so yeah, go see a counselor. That would be great. There's also free mental health resources in our area too. National Association of Mental Illness, NAMI. I'll pro I did not put the link in this uh, video yet, but I will add it, uh, is a great free resource for uh, mental education and mental health um, uh, help. And it's free, free. Spend whatever you got to spend for child care. Call whoever you got to call. Um, if you got to drop them off at your dad's house, drop them off at your dad's house. But I want you to go see somebody. And I want you to lay out, here's what's happening. 
And if you want to try and save this, I was going to say save your marriage, but it's not even one. Um, yeah. Do you have a daughter? I have two sons. Two sons. Okay. So one of your sons comes home in 22 years, 23 years, 24 years. And says, hey, mom, you know, Susan, I've been dating for six years. We're having a second kid. And I told her this is going to be a great tryout for her to see if she's going to be the one we're sticking around. What would your response to that boy be? I'd be so mad at him. That's right. This is where he knocked it out of the park. He gave an example that made her really think about the example that she might be setting for her own kids. And um, I think that was brilliant. And we do that in counseling and in coaching. And Deloney himself is really super great at thinking these things up. I don't know if he does it on the fly or if he uh, screens these callers in advance and plans out what he's going to say, but that was a good example. That's right. Here's where he gets deep. He can get deep, you know? Yeah. Yep. Okay. And I want you to treat yourself with that same level of care. I want you to treat those babies that same level of care. My deepest wish is that your husband goes, what am I doing? Or your boyfriend does, goes, what am I doing? And he snaps out of it. Yeah. Okay. And maybe he's misreading Jocko and misreading the understanding of what that guy talks about. <laughs> but the root of what he talks about is ownership. Mm. Responsibility. Mm. Accomplishing a mission. Well. Right? Not berating a exhausted, frustrated, um, postpartum mother of their two babies. Okay. Sounds good. Every guy out there listening to this, stop. Stop. You want your wife to get off social media? Give her a place worthy of being off social media for. That is a great quote too. Oh my gosh. So he's talking to the guys now out there and being fair, uh, girls too could actually do the same thing is if you want your partner to get off social media, create a place, a space where it's better than social media. You and a wife who's not so exhausted all the time, pick up the crap around the house. <laughs> Sit down and have that conversation with her and say, how can I honor you today? And I know you're off making the money. I know you're off doing your work, blah, blah filling the blah, whatever. Cool. You know, you're not doing dragging around two little kids. Mm. My wife's been out of town for a few days, and I've had the, the kids at my house. Coming into work is a blessing and a gift in a safe, safe, quiet place. And it's been like three days. Yeah, so every so often, counselors will do appropriate self-disclosure and so will coaches, and there's nothing wrong with that. And it helps the counselor to be a little bit more relatable to the client, or in this case, the caller. And that was a great example that uh, she knows she's not alone, that managing kids are hard. Uh, that's why I don't have any. <laughs> not day after day after day after year after year. Nikki, I'm so sorry this is happening to you, and I'm sorry to tell you this. But you know, I'm not telling you anything new, right? Right, yeah. Is your dad in your corner? Is your mom in your corner? Definitely. Okay. So I want you to lean on them. But today I want you to go make an appointment with a counselor and start getting the help and care that you need. And either come up with a, a if then, if now, if not now, then conversation with your boyfriend, a practice conversation, or an exit strategy mm -hmm. sooner rather than later. Yeah, and I like the way he says, go to a counselor and these will this will be your goal to be able to do, put the options on the table, if this, then this, if that, then that, or an exit strategy. And that's a lot of what's done in counseling is to clarify what it is that needs to happen and what the client would like to see happen in their own lives. And so I like that piece of advice. And then within counseling, they can give other pieces of homework to this, this caller or this caller will become a client with a counselor. And um, yeah, so I like that really good piece of advice. You are not on a job interview. You are not trying out for this guy's love. You're better than that. 
You got more than that. Husbands, create a home for your wives so they don't want to be on social media. They want to be with you. Create an environment where they've got space to go exercise and move their bodies and to walk because there's not 40 other things that you've given them to do or they feel obligated to do in this space so they don't even have time to take care of themselves. Create a world where your partner's got space. Man, I I hate that for you, Nikki. I'm heartbroken for you. Jeez Louise, I don't even know how to end this show, man. Um, Keeping it real. No, you know what? You're gonna end, the, end this with strength. Just like I told the caller earlier, you've got the pen now. There's a period at the end of that sentence when he said, I don't want to appear desperate. Cool. You are desperate. You're at the end of your rope. And now you got a pen. And you get to write what happens next. Hmm. And I want you to write, I matter. My kids matter. I'm worthy of being loved. I'm worthy of being in a situation where I'm not trying out, where I'm fully known and fully loved. And I'm going to start taking the next step to get there. It's a teeny tiny, frustrating, collapsing step, but I'm going to get there. I'm going to take the next one. I'm going to lean on my dad. I'm going to lean on my mom. I'm going to lean on my counselor. I'm going to lean on my friends and my community. Mm -hmm. Because this guy said he won't be there. Not until I pass the tryout, which is, I guess, is six years and two kids later. (laughs) But you're going to be a fierce, bad mamma jamma, Nikki. And we're all rooting for you. Let me know how that conversation goes. Let me know how connecting with that counselor goes. Gentlemen, be better. I'm saying this to myself. I got to be better too, but we got to be better. We got to be better than that. And if we got friends in our lives that talk that crap to their wives, to their girlfriends, we got to be willing to step up and say no. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. It's not funny. It's not a joke. It's not, hey, bro. Nope. <laughs> Be better than that. We got to hold ourselves accountable, gentlemen. Starting yesterday. And there you have it. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So, what did you think? So, that's 17 minutes of Dr. John that I had interrupted a little bit in the middle and then the end and all that stuff. So in 17 minutes, a coach can really do a lot of good things. Counselors will take an hour or 50 minutes or however long it is. And so I think both can be really super valuable. We have a lot of things in common. We have our own reactions. We have uh, leaning into emotions and we have goals being made on both counselor and coaching and homework given, education given. And, uh, you know, the differences I went through uh, earlier. Well, we don't spoon feed clients. We let them develop their own answers and we help the client to conclude, to come to their own conclusions and identify their emotions and all that other stuff. So, Uh, Bottom line, counseling, coaching, either one is good. We've got a lot of mental health struggles out there, a lot of people who are hurting. And so I wanted to make this option available to everybody. Last season on Common the Chaos podcast, I basically, I went on to Facebook and said, hey, anybody want to be a guest on my podcast? And I got replies from tons of coaches. So last season, I had all kinds of coaches on my podcast. And if you'd like to see how they work, you can go back and listen to some of those episodes. But they're, they've got so much valuable knowledge and information. Please don't discount them. Yeah, insurance doesn't cover them. You'll probably be having to pay out of pocket. But if you really need the help, Um, I'll put some free resources in the notes here and um, please don't struggle alone, help each other. And if you are interested in helping uh, your fellow citizen out there by being a counselor or a coach, please contact me and I can talk to you about doing that because the world is going to need more counselors and coaches and helpers. And if you just don't want to go to school and, and do any of that stuff, that's okay. You can learn to be a better person as well. And so I appreciate everybody uh, hanging out with me, uh, although nobody did uh, hang out with me, and that's okay. Um, I am just about ready to, oh wait, is that Meg? I see Meg. <laughs> hey Meg, I'm, too, I'm doing a live stream so I don't have to do editing. It's good to see you and Johnny too. Yeah, good stuff. Be good to each other, everybody. I wanted to show you my picture of Yoda. 
Yes. Hmm? Do or do not? There is no try. <laughs> I just love me some Yoda. <laughs> All right. Well, awesome. It was great seeing uh, you, Meg, and uh, everybody else watch the replay and decide whether you like counseling, coaching, and uh, if you don't need any mental health care or help, consider helping somebody. That's what our world needs. We really do. All right. Thanks for listening to Common Chaos, and you all take good care. Thanks for listening to Calming the Chaos podcast. You can find all Calming the Chaos podcasts on iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Google Music, Spotify, Amazon, and on YouTube. You can also go to www.calmingthechaospodcast.com for more information and to see all podcast episodes. Thanks so much for listening, and I look forward to sharing my next podcast episode with you. In the meantime, take care.